And we want to um, let you do if you're tuning in, uh, feel free to let us know that uh, that you're listening. We are excited about what the Lord is going, is doing in our lives. And we praise God for everything that he has done for the people of God <clears throat> and what he's doing. We praise God for tonight. Um, another day the Lord has spared us to see another day. We thank God for that. And my precious wife is thank God for her and uh, all that she do for the ministry. Uh, she's been faithful down through the years. Started with her father and I can after his uh, retiring and going home to the Lord, she's continued to work with me, her husband, and she's been faithful. We have two uh, sons and two grandsons, and uh, Jamaica, our daughter-in-law. Uh, so we thank God for two grandsons. Thank God for Jim. In Jesus' name. And we just thank the Lord for all that and what all he's doing. And we continue, y'all continue to pray for us. And as you as, as we pray for you in Jesus' name. Praise God. And I hope that my wife, but she might be. Child and I wanted her to uh, give us a song on tonight. Just if she if she will, in Jesus' name. If you will, sir, will you give us a second? If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. I know he will answer prayer. He will answer prayer. I know he will answer prayer. Yeah, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. Call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call him in the morning, he will answer prayer. If you call him in the morning, he will answer prayer. You just call on Jesus. He will answer prayer. Call on Jesus. He will answer prayer. You can call him in the new day. He will answer prayer. Oh, call him in the new day. He will answer prayer. You just call on Jesus. He will answer prayer. Call on Jesus. He will answer prayer. Amen. 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 Thank God for that election. In Jesus' name. You have anything you want to say this time? Oh, that's my wife. She has anything she wants to say. Praise the Lord to everybody. I too want to just give honor and thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his goodness and his mercy at all times. We want to thank him for the Holy Ghost that abides in our soul. We want to thank him for his goodness at all times. I want to thank him for my passing companion, you know, a God called leader, a great husband. Amen. We just thank God for him and his work in the ministry. And we thank God for the saints, how they are following behind and we're working on the vision, you know, preparing you know, for the coming of the Lord. Amen. We just thank him, you know, for all of our trials and tribulations because I found out personally mm. that my trials and my tribulations 
I'm not there to hurt me, but it, it, but it comes to make me strong. My trials have actually encouraged me yes. to go on in Jesus' name. I thank him for that. I want to thank him for the saints that are pressing on. And I, I just thank him. God is just doing great things. This is the season of blessings. Mm. God is just doing a great thing. All we have to do is just hold on to the promises of the Lord. And he is going to make everything all right. He will keep his promise yes. to his children. So we thank God um, for what he is. And I just love him today. And, and I pray for all that he is in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for that song and prayer. Because truly, out of these 45 years, uh, every year has been uh, better and better. Each year, first year was great, and it's, every year has been better and better. Let me think of salvation, what makes a difference, like being saved to a saved companion. I tell you, you cannot be a saved companion. If you don't have a saved companion, you need to get one, because I tell you, when you got a saved companion, it makes all the world a difference. I thank God for a saved companion tonight, because she is truly a safe companion, and I honor her. I thank God for her in Jesus' name. And we want to just let you know, also we are praying for um, Apostle Campbell uh, and his family. Uh, we will continue to pray for them in the loss of their father, Apostle Campbell, because uh, when my father-in-law passed away, Apostle Campbell was a great mentor. He he really um, had been there for me to encourage me, and I mean he had done just that. He certainly has encouraged me even when the Apostle uh, from England, Apostle McFarland, uh, was from England. He came away with a good friend of Apostle Campbell, and. They befriended me, just two great men of God that, that spoke into my life. And Paul Scam was there. He was, he was there to encourage me and tell me to go on and do what I know to do is right. He gave me good, wise information that I didn't have. He shared with me in many, many things. Been to his house, been to his home, and his wife was so gracious. Uh, been to his church, and he was all grateful. Just, just, just great people. Uh, fed us at his church, fed us at his home. And uh, Apostle came from England, and Apostle McFarland, which was another great man of God, I miss him very much. And uh, just Lord, ordered me to be around such great people uh, with so much love. I'm just a small preacher, just a little preacher, but they treated me like I was somebody special. And I always honor that. His son, um, Lawrence County Jr. and Philip, uh, Dr. Philip Campbell, and the, the mother, and just the whole family has been just gracious. And uh, because of Bishop Gray's knowing them and being with them for years, and I just thank God for that. So we are praying for their family deeply, and Mother Campbell especially. Uh, because it was a man a long time, and I know that um, it'd be well missed, not only him, but the church family. So we want to let you know, church family, by way cathedral, we are praying with you and for you, because we lost our leader, our shepherd, and it is a great loss. Um, nobody can take their shepherd's place. All, all we can do is, is try to keep the ministry alive and try to keep it going. We can't do it like they do it. But we can do what we can to hold it up, be that supporting arm, uh, like <laughs> you know, when anytime the man, men of God are going through, all the women of God are going through, they need that support, and that support means a lot when you are fighting the fight of faith and everything is coming against you. But long as you hold up the man of God arms, 
they will prevail. They will win. And that's what we need in this society these days. We need men and women as well that will hold up uh, the ones that are in leadership, support them. That, that, that's what they were meaning when the enemy is and the battle is being lost. When you hold the man of hand, arms, and battle, I tell you, it makes a world of difference. It makes it so much easier uh, when they are facing what they face. And if you are in ministry, uh, you're going to face some things. You know, you might be selling along pretty well now, but you can believe one thing, uh, it's going to come. Opposition, trials and tests will come. I know from firsthand, I the apostle reads that it was a it was a it was a war. It was a warfare. And I tell you, only the Lord was able to bring me through. And that's why I think today when many of us don't realize what a woman of a man of God goes through when they step in leadership, especially in the role of a pastor, uh, you're a target. Uh, and you're uh, like you've got a bullseye on your own, not on your back, on your chest. But believe one thing, saints of God, God will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be there. And I thank God for being there so many times for Samira. I just mean, but for Samira and how you need, you need, you need people to stand with you. You need godly people, not just anybody, but you need godly people that will stand with you uh, in those tests and trials. And I tell you, God will bring you through. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, it has been that long. Apostle Grieve, I died in 2014. I mean, I mean 2004. Was it? Four? Yeah, 2004. And, and it, it, it feels like it's been that long for 19 years. And I tell you, it is, it's been a challenge, but it has been a good challenge. It, it, it makes you grow up in ministry, it makes you become a man or a woman in ministry. And that's why I can say that that's why you need mentors, men and women that has been in the battle, has been in the trenches for years that, that, that will step up and help you uh, in your trials and your tests. And I thank God for men uh, like Apostle Campbell that will, 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 will share with you and, and tell you things uh, so like he, he told me, uh, you don't have to sell anything. There is this, and he said, but you need to have to teach your people how to give. And that was his word. He said, you teach your people how to give. And I took that information he gave me. When we were in the, in the trenches, in the deep valleys, in some places that I know that we will come out of. He can encourage me. You stay with the word and you teach people to give. And by him sharing it with me, it really blessed me so, so much. I mean, taking time out with his business guys and would call me and talk to me. And I had his number call and talk to him. And, you know, he was just gracious to me. And I thank God for he found favor, uh, took time with me. And I tell you, that's why we need men and women with longevity in the ministry that have experiences. These men have had experiences with women as all the way back to the early 50s, 50s. I uh, started past, I think, around 50. That's a long time ago. And, and, and until the Lord took him home, he was standing on the wall. And, you know, we can't be those great leaders. That they, they had, that was their time. That was their season to shine. And they did an awesome job with the things they had to put up with. I don't know if we could even make it with what they had to go through with. Things are not like it is now. Uh, you had access to Holiday Inn or 
the Marriott's and stuff like that. You didn't have that access to those things back then. You didn't have access to a decent bathroom or water fountain. So these men went through what they went through and had certain places they could stay and certain places they couldn't stay. They had a green book and they had different books that they used to know where to stay at, who would accept them. I remember my uncles lived in the Detroit 50s and uh, they would share with me how the, they would have to drive all night um, in the car with the family in the car with food and was meant very few places they could stop and eat. Or even use a bathroom. Sometimes they couldn't have the uh my uncle would say they had to stay at stop at a rest at a, at a service station and stay in the car to the next morning to get gas because they were closed. What about 24 on those country roads back in the those 50s, early 50s, 50, 51, 52, 53. Um wow, they had to wait to open up. And sometimes you had to go behind the building to release yourself. You couldn't go into the bathrooms. I only had one for them. Oh, wow. so a lot of things these old uh, people, uh, pastors, uh, staying in people's homes and different things they had to go through. So I thank God people that uh, understand the struggle, um, like Apostle Campbell, Bishop Reyes, uh, would tell me he would uh, uh, stay in the homes of the uh, guest preacher because there's no one nowhere else to stay. And uh, so we owe a lot. We're indebted to the the patriarchs that have gone on to be with the Lord and what they have done for the people of God and to teach us to hold on the whole lot. And they always say a better day is coming. Just be patient and hold out. We praise God for the saints coming in. Praise God for you and you, Sister. On tonight, uh, praise God for Sister Evan and Sister Deborah. And we praise God for the sick and shut in, Brother Clayton. We're glad to see them and pray, pray with him. And God will continue to heal his body. And y'all pray for me. Uh, we lost a sister. She was, and uh, they want to. A great side for her on Friday. We pray for that family. Um, we will not be able to, they're not, not going to have a funeral. It's going to have a great side. So you have so much going on in families now. You pray for families. Pray for my family. If you don't have anybody else to pray for, you pray for mine. Amen. So, Sister so there will you uh, read us the scripture? I'll read <clears throat> from Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I read uh, some, Psalms, the first Psalms, I read uh, verses 1 through 6. I read the entire chapter. Amen. Yeah. Saints, I'll be glad when we can get back in the house of God. Zoom is fine, but it's nothing like fellowship. And I don't care if it's not but one or two uh, in the house of God. It's something about being in God's house. It's, it's something about feeling the presence of God in his house. It's not like my house. My house is not knowing like the house of God. It's something about being around the saints of God. It gives you strength. And give you power in Jesus' name. Uh, we're gonna have a word of prayer, and I want you to think about somebody that needs prayer and call their name out. My niece, um, Alicia, and Hortense, and Colin Long, 
I'm calling their name out for prayer. That uh, we lost their mother, Elena uh, Williams. We're praying for that uh, of that family and my family, which uh, my sister's children. But put the name out there that God may uh, touch and heal them. Well, and they lost their mother. And anybody name you want to call out, you, you feel free to call out their name out right now. I call out the Galloway and Harston family. Amen. Anyone else want to call out tonight in your family? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray, Father God, in the precious and adorable name of Jesus. Remember my family, my immediate family, in Jesus' name, Lord, touch it. Lord, let us bring our minds and hearts together as a family. Because so many families, Lord, are not together. But we pray for the strength of families. We need each other. We need family. All we got is family in this world. Not only our spiritual family, but our natural family. Oh, God, we want you to touch and agree that you be in their minds, their hearts, and their spirit, that someone might get saved in our families, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, calling on that name. So truly, with those young people, senseless killing down in Nashville, seem like that no one cares but the parents and the people that was involved. Lord, bring some sense, some sense of morality back to this nation. Never in my wildest dream I would see innocent babies being slaughtered by the hands of their own people, own Americans, and slaughtering these children with guns and gun violence. And it seems like no people have turned a deaf ear, turned away from what is reality. Lord, I bring some sense of reality back to this nation. We call ourselves a godly nation. But Lord God, ain't no godliness in what we see now. When one gentleman said a, a weapon to him is like a, a, a knife. You don't have no mercies. But the, the mercy of God is gone. People don't have the feeling, the mercy, the compassion. They care more about an animal. They will save a whale. They will rescue lions and tigers. But who's going to rescue these human beings? Who's going to rescue these people of God? These children, who's going to rescue them? But we go out our way to rescue these, these different animals and see all this stuff. But God help us become a godly nation again. They call on your name. People say they are saved. They say they're religious. But prove it by your life. Prove it by the way you live. Have some stability. Have some 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 grace about your life. Right. We may lift one another up. And we may show compassion for our neighbors and our friends. Because now look like the Lord and people is just have lost their minds. And they say people are insane. The guns don't kill, but people kill. But yeah. if people cannot kill unless they got something in their hands to kill. So we pray for our nation. We pray for our Senate, our House, that they come together and be a nation of one, not a nation of many. So, Lord God, this we are so fragile. Even like our churches are falling away from the gospel truth. These are the last days, but we're praying for this nation, a great nation. But the enemy would love to destroy this great nation. That's what all he is, and he's trying to with the end. Within the body, within this nation, they're trying to destroy. But oh God, we pray for this nation. We pray for President Biden to come to heaven and also Joe uh, Biden, Joe Biden, Dr. Joe Biden. We want to pray for that family. Continue to pray for our nation, our governors, our senators, our president. Just pray. I pray for our families in Jesus' name. Protect our homes, our churches, the mosques, the synagogues. Wherever the house of worship is protected. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We need prayer. We need prayer. We got to pray one for the other thing. Call for my sister is in uh, rest home in Rio. I went to see her. She's been there quite a while. We'll pray for her. She's doing well. I'm not going to tell you again. Don't come in here hollering at me. You understand? I'm in here having prayer, and you come in here hollering, because I have my stuff. And you come up to I'm done, Miss Angela. So we want to move on and just to let you have everything you want to say. Before we move on. Is you have Mr. Mitchell. We're going to Second Samuel. Praise go the ahead, Lord. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to thank and praise the Lord for being on another Zoom service. And just thank the Lord for all that he is to me, for all the ways he's made, all the doors he's opened, and just for the things that he just continued to do for me and my family. Yeah. And just thank God for how he brought uh, my husband through his surgery, and he's doing good. And y'all just keep him in your prayers that he'll you know, get strengthened, uh, have a speedy recovery. And I just thank God for all this goodness, just mm -hmm. for everything that he's doing. And just continue to pray our strength in the Lord. Amen. And we praying for our children, our grandchildren. And the Lord has been putting Sister Ebony in my spirit. Uh, she dropped my spirit. And I asked my wife about Sister Ebony. And uh, you know, she had heard from myself. She was, she just was in my spirit heavily. So I'm praying for her and her family in Jesus' name. When God drops my ear, spirit saying, we don't know what's going on, but one thing we can do is pray. That don't mean nothing bad is going on. But it gives us, God just don't put people in your spirit for nothing. So when God puts someone in your spirit to pray, you pray. Amen? Pray. And if God put me in your spirit, pray. Because we all need prayer. Amen, amen. We all need prayer. We thank God for um, tonight. You know, I um, people say, well, you know, we're not coming to the building. Uh, we haven't our uh, prayer and Bible study on Zoom. Don't you know, to me, this is just as hard as it is to, go, to drive to Reesville, open the building up, go and cut the lights on. This is just as hard to me because this is, anything you do for the Lord is always a struggle. It's always a fight. The enemy is not going to let you do anything if he can without a struggle. Amen? Even your own home. Sometimes you don't feel like a cutting on your computer. It's time for Zoom. Uh, many drop off. But you have to push your way. Oh, yes. You got to fight. You got to fight. You can't give up the fight, saints. Because anything you do will put a Lord going to cost you. Amen. But that's all right. One thing about it. God is on our side. We look, look at the book tonight. Of second book of Samuel. Second Samuel. Second book of Samuel. And David learned of Saul's death. David. Learned of Saul's death. Saul was dead, and David returning after the victory over the Amalekites had been at zigzag for two days. On the third day, a man arose from 
Saul's camp with his clothes torn and earth on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. David asked him, where have you come from? I have escaped from the Israelite camp. He said, David said, what has happened? Tell me, he replied, the people fled from battle and many of them has fallen and are dead. Saul and his son Jonathan are dead too. But David had this great victory and no doubt his victory was great. He was believed that his campaign was successful. Now here come this man out of the camp bringing him some disastrous news about Jonathan, David's friend. And the king, Saul, was dead. That, like, you have a great victory. And then here comes a great disaster. You enjoyed, you were enjoying yourself. Yeah. Thing came out beautifully. And then here come the disaster, bad news. Something had happened to someone that you knew, a friend, a family member. It, it just knocks the wind out of you. I no doubt David here had lost his best friend, Jonathan. So you know, that no doubt this knocked the wind out of David. I've, you've been successful. You had a great battle. Now you're dealing with death of your friend, grief. David asked the question, what has happened? Tell me, he replied, the people fled from battle and many of them have fallen and are dead. Saul, and his son Jonathan, Jonathan are dead too. No doubt they was hoping that Saul was saved and Jonathan was still alive, but the bad news that he received, they are dead as well. Then David asked the young man who brought the news, how do you know that Saul and Jonathan are dead. The young man replied, I have, I happened to be on Mount Gilbo and there was Saul leaning on his spear with the chariot and the cavalry bearing down on him. Glanced behind him and seeing me, he shouted to me, I replied, here I am. He said, who are you? I replied, I'm a Malachite. He then said, come here and kill me. My head is swimming, although I still have my strength. So I went over to him and killed him because I knew that once he failed, he could not survive. I then took the crown which he had on his head and the bracelet on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. David then took hold of his clothes and tore them and all the men with him did the same. They moaned and wept and fasted into the evening for Saul and the son Jonathan, for the people of Yahweh and of the house of Israel, because they have fallen by the sword. All the mistreatment and the bad things that Saul had done to David, weakness had, came, had come to his house. 
try to kill David on many occasions. Many occasions try to wipe him out. Sent men to chase him, his armies to chase and to catch David and to kill him. All the things is sometimes it takes a while to come back around, but it'll get there. Whatever you sow, you should also reap. So Saul was reaping the same thing that he tried to do to David. Be careful what you do to someone else because it's got a way, some people call it karma, to get back to you. No doubt, Saul had no mercy for David because he tried to take him out many times because of the spirit of jealousy had entered the heart of Saul. It's amazing how people can love so much can hate you so much. With all love that David showed him, even when he was uh, bewitched by the by the, the spirit of evil, David had to play the harp and was loaned to him from his father Jesse to play the harp in the palace to drive the evil spirit away. He had forgotten about all that, all the victory David had won. But the main one that was, was what really got to Saul was David had killed him 10,000 and Saul had only given him one. Try to throw a javelin at dinner table, try to take David out. It's amazing how things can come back on you. So be careful the spirit, the spear that you throw to take somebody else out. It comes back like a boomerang to you. It's better to show love. It's better. You, you gotta learn how to love somebody. You need to learn how to love folks. You gotta learn how to treat people right. Because that thing has a way of coming back on you. Amen. I'm telling you, I've seen it in my lifetime how people you had if they tried to destroy you, you had to end up going and praying and helping them. I had a, uh, a situation years ago when a a preacher that was a member of our church years and years ago, I'm not calling no name, he didn't care for me at all. At all. And I never did anything to the gentleman. I always was nice and kind. So one day, uh, he came to me. He said, Ella, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say this that I used, I didn't like you. I said, Why? I said, I haven't done anything to you. He said, I apologize. I didn't know you. But now I know you. And he apologized. And I had no idea that he felt that way about me. Never did anything to the man, never really spoke to him that much. No more in praise the Lord. But people can dislike you just because of the Holy Ghost that's in you. The spirit of God in you calls people to, to dislike you for no reason, don't have a cause. David was dealing with the same issue. Saul just didn't like his own son-in-law. Just didn't like him. Had no reason to dislike him. He was loyal. He was faithful. But even in all that, that spirit of the, the, the devil could cause folks to despise you and dislike you for no apparent reason. I experienced that. But, but, but even in that, it really kind of shocked me 
because I didn't know that gentleman felt that way about me. You don't know who dislike you for no reason. And the God will, will cover you and keep that spirit away from you. Even that gentleman was there. He couldn't get next to me because the Holy Ghost was there to separate. It's like Saul could not get to David. Even in the cave, Saul's men could not even get to David. Even Saul entered the cave. David could have took him out, but he didn't. To touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. So in the end, the enemy killed Saul and Jonathan. It's amazing how the tables can turn on you. So we have to learn to learn to love folks. People say, well, I don't, I can't be phony. You ain't got to be phony. I said you got to learn to love them. You got to learn to treat them right. Jesus should have hated all of us. He was the enemy against Christ. He should have hated Peter. Should have hated Paul. His first name Saul. He could have hated him. He persecuted the church. He held Stephen's coat when he stole him to death. He could have hated him. But God was God. He had no hate in him. So we as Christians, as people of God, God will cover you from your enemy like he did David. You don't have to dislike folks. You don't have not to be kind to people. I'll never forget, I worked with a gentleman and we, they had him to travel with me uh, over the country. I mean, out throughout the United States. So when he first, I was, he felt like I was over him. He didn't like the idea. He had been with the company a long time, but they, he was with me and, and I had to manage things. He didn't like that. And he would literally cuss me out. Just cuss me out. And I would say, you shouldn't be cursing like that. He would curse even more. And I had to, we would ride together to different places. And he would just act unseemly. But I still, I would say, you don't have to curse like that. But, and he became one of the best friends I could ever have. He was, he looked out for me. He watched over me as he did his own son. See, God turned that thing around. Suppose I had been cursing and acting the way he was acting. But the Lord kept me. I mean, a lot of times I got angry. I was angry. So I was angry at the way he was talking. But I held my cool and just said, you shouldn't be cursing. I'm grown. He was much older. His older than my father. But at the end of the day, he became one of the best friends I could ever have. He looked out for me like he did his own blood. His wife, when she died, she, she wouldn't let her pastor do her eulogy. She wouldn't let her church have it. I, I did her eulogy, and I went to see him before he passed away. And he said, I want you to do my eulogy in my passing. God can turn a situation around if you stay godly. David had to stay godly, and God was the one that took Saul out. God was the one. That Jonathan out, not David. And, and it, when we read that text, they said David had a love of, of Jonathan more than a, of a woman. See, people try to use that in a different vein. You know, just like I got cousins, male cousins, 
we love each other, not in a sexual way, but in a respectful man-to-man -man way. Love the way you carry yourself, love the way you treat your wife, love the way you treat your family, love, love how you've been there for me, and we love each other in that vein, not in a sexual vein, but in a respectful vein, not as a woman. So people took that out of context as, as, as David meant something totally different. But we have a different love for, or you have a different love for another woman. That don't mean you uh, like that. That means you love her and respect her as your sister and a woman of, of mercy, a, a woman of love. It's a respectful type of love. So we have understanding uh, that love of God. We love our brothers and our sisters. The Bible says we love one another. That's what the Bible says. We love one another. And that don't mean anything other than that, but you love and you respect and you reverence them and you reverence the gods in them. So that's the way about J David and Jonathan, that relationship they had was, was a respectful. He could have had David killed, but he didn't. When David hid in the cornfield, Jonathan came to him. They loved each other to protect one another. And you love a brother. You do things but protect that brother. You both men. But you respect each other so much. And you tell them things that is right. So I love you, brother. But, you know, you, you need to tighten up. You, you need to do this. You need to do that. That's the love you respect for that brother. Or your sister to a sister. You see them going down the wrong way. Look, I love you too much to see you doing your life, yourself like that. I love you too much to see you fall down and you help them get up. That love, the respect you have for that brother or that sister. And it doesn't mean anything else no more than you have that loving respect for that individual. Now, we're going on. Do we have anybody that's listening to me? If you have experienced anything like I experienced, are you are you 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 like to share it at this time? I know many of you have experienced the same thing I've spoke about. Anyone at this time? Feel free. Amen. And we'll move on to if y'all have things. But it's good to open up some time and just be you. It's good just to open up and say, Lord, you know me. You know me. And yes, God knows us. But I tell you, it's nothing like sharing what God has done. It strengthened so many people. David said to the young man who he had brought the news, where are you from? He replied, I am the son of a resident foreigner, the Malachi. David said, how was it that you were not afraid to lift your hand to destroy Yahweh's anointed? Then David called one of the young men, come here, he said, strike him down. The man struck him and he died. David said, your blood be upon your own head. You convicted yourself out of your own mouth by saying, I kill Yahweh the Lord. See, the enemy, by his own confession, will destroy himself. You don't have to fight against your enemy. Your enemy will destroy himself. We praise God, saints of God. We want people to be saved. We want people to know the Lord. We want people to love. But when you don't confess your sins, but if you confess your sin, God is gracious to forgive you of your sin. David saying, saying the fallen lament over Saul and his son. Jonathan, it is for the teaching 
arch to the children of Judah. It is written in the book of the just. Does the slay of the splendor, does the splendor of Israel, he lie dead on your height? How did the hero fall? Did not speak in Gath, nor broadcast it in the streets of Amalekite, of the Philistine majors, the fear of the fear, the daughters of uncircumcised of the gloat, you mount a gibbon, no dew nor rain fall on you, or treacherous fields where the heroes shall lie dishonored. Not breeze with all the shield of Saul, but with the blood of a wounded man, the fat of the wounded, or the fat of the warriors. The bow of Jonathan never turned back. The sword of Saul never come home unsalted. Saul and Jonathan, the love. And the handsome, 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 with divided neither in life nor in death, swifter than the eagle were they, stronger than the lions. O daughter of Israel, weep for Saul, who gave you scarlet and fine linen to wear, who pinned golden jewels. On your dress. 25th verse. First chapter says, How did the heroes fall in a thick of battles? And you wonder, How did a righteous fall in the heat of battle? How can a righteous fall? How can a righteous fall? All of us in life have had some failures, some misgivings, some shortcomings. All of us, all of us, not just some, but all of us have been there. All of us have faced some unfortunate situation in our lives, if we be truthful. All of us have said some things we shouldn't have said, if we be truthful. But through all that we have been through, God was gracious unto us. Thank God for, the, for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. I thank God for the ones that come in, came on tonight. To be on Zoom. It shows me that you have a love for the Word of God. It shows me that you love the Lord. Because this is, it's, it's not easy to work all day or whatever you have to do and then spend 45 minutes an hour on Zoom. It's not easy. It's always a fight. It's even like if you go into that building at church, it's always a struggle. On Wednesday night, many times I would leave work, been traveling all day, come back and go to Rezor to Wednesday night Bible teaching. Come to back, and you know, all in South Carolina, coming back that morning for that night, that evening. But be a church for Bible study. Those were some, it, it's not easy. It was tough. But I thank God for it. Because every time I made that sacrifice, God always made a sacrifice for me and my family. God kept bread on my table. He kept my bills paid. Maybe not all of them. But I'm telling you something. Saying when you serve the Lord, it will pay off. It is not easy in this world, but it will pay off if you be faithful. 
Jonathan Ballou, you are dying. I too am stricken. I'm desolate for you, Jonathan, my brother, my dear. You were to me. Your love was more than more wonderful to me than the love of a woman. How did the hero fall and the weapons of war succumb? See, in, in other words, you're saying his love is not like a love for a woman, but his love is a love toward a godly man that had respect for him and each other. The love, not a sexual love, not a of any other way. It was a love, a respect for all that Jonathan had did for David. Many times, David should have been dead. But it was because the love that Doc, that uh, Jonathan had for him, that Saul hadn't killed him. He would warn David about his fathers and what his father was trying to do. Yes, he did. He warned him about what he was up to and how he was, he was hiding and Jonathan made sure he could eat took care of him. That's the kind of love and respect they have for each other. And it was, he said, beyond a woman, it's not like a woman's love. It was more love than a sexual love or intimate love. This love that we have is genuine. It's not about what you can do for me or what I can do for you. But it's that love that we share. We could talk. We could have a good conversation. Something you can't say to a woman and something you, a woman can't say to a man. Even certain things you don't tell your own husband or your own wife. Something is strictly for another man's ears. Same the woman, some things a woman speak about it only for a woman's ears. But the respect and love was so deep in the and with them. And David penned this in the text. Oh, what a wonderful experience. Like I was saying to you earlier, the gentleman we work together. Travel together. He loved me like a son. Not as a woman, but as a son to make sure that I was taken care of, that nobody would try to harm me. And we have been to some places where at certain conventions and meetings I never forget a, a meeting we was having in Las Vegas, and we were there, and and we were having they was having a fellowship after a social gathering after the meeting, and we were there, and 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 him and I was standing and talking to each other against the wall, and we just looked over the crowd. So one of the gentlemen came up to me and says, uh, "Did anyone say anything to you?" I said. No. He said, I wonder because the way the, the general was acting, he wanted to make sure that this guy, he had been drinking, hadn't said anything to me or try to start a, a fight or a struggle uh, there. I said, no, no one had said anything to me at all. And Charles, he was standing there with me because he was always standing with our back against the wall, just looking. But you never know where your enemy is. But God have protection over you, even when you don't see and don't know what the enemy is up to. God knows what the enemy. I had no idea. Charles, with God with me, had no idea what the enemy was up to. But we was in a position where we could see everything going on around us. Nothing can come behind us because we're standing against the wall just looking. God will put you in a place in a position where the enemy cannot touch you or harm you. That's what I'm saying. Say that's respect, that's love one for the other, not any anything wrong. 
but just to respect and love for your brother and your sister. And that's what God is asking for. He wants to love one another. Unconditional love. Not like a woman, not like a man. But the love, the, the respect that you have for that person that look out for you and that help protect you even when everything around you is going crazy. Amen? Anyone have anything they want to say on that? If you have experience like some I've experienced? We have a few minutes. Um, Pastor Fowler, this is Sister Miller. I was I was listening to you. And one of the things when you're talking about that some people may not like you, the scripture that keeps coming to my mind, despite what people do to you, um, in loving kindness have I drawn thee. So yeah. despite the fact of how people treat you, you as you stated, you still have to show God's love mm -hmm. towards people. And even the example that you gave of the coworker. Sometimes people are just watching you because you say you love Jesus. They're trying to get under your skin, but no matter what, you still have to represent the mm -hmm. Lord, even when you know people don't like you. Amen. And, amen. And, amen. And sometimes you want to snap. You know, be honest now. Sometimes that's want... true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but I have to. Uh, when that when that happens to me, I have to leave. I have to walk out because amen. I'm still human. And if I know that people really don't care for me, even in my organization, I do what I have to do and I just keep it moving. Um, that's what I have to do. <clears throat> and, and, and sometimes being in the car with him, I couldn't get out the car, so I was kind of stuck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> that's I was kind of stuck. But even in that, God always know how to change the atmosphere. And atmosphere would change, and we and we would end up laughing. And and I, I remember we was coming uh, from Philadelphia one night, and we was coming through Virginia. And he would began to tell me some things uh, that happened to him as a kid. And they was talking. He was talking about this sharing some thing with me. And um, and we began to laugh. We were coming down the highway, and we was cracking up. Now, we don't went from, from being up angry or upset to laughing. And we were riding and we just this this crazy laughing. And, and, and we couldn't stop laughing. We laughed about 30 minutes of life coming down the highway. God can turn your mourning into joy. Somebody give God pray. Hallelujah. He can turn your midnight into day. And I've seen the Lord do it. And he will do it. When we re rely on his love for us, he's going to protect us. He's going to keep us. The devil could have whatever he got trying to destroy. He can't touch you because God got you. He protects us. Uh, you know, it's just, I thank God what you said because it happened to the best of us. Amen. The best of us. Sister uh, Deborah, you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, sir. I'm good. Hey, man, anybody else? Sister Mitchell or Sister Evan? If you want to share, can we move on? Because saints, and sometimes you have to get rid of some stuff. Sometimes you get so bogged down with the cares of life, you're loaded down and you have no relief. But every now and then, sometimes you just got to holler. You just release that stress. And, and sometimes, you know, I've been to a place, I'd be riding my, by myself and I just start just giving God praise. I guess some people think I'll be crazy driving down and just be hollering. Me in, in the car. A lot of this, uh, this releasing in my car. And I feel so relieved when I just let go and let God have his way. And sometimes I, I, I'll be traveling and it's just like the Holy Ghost will get in that car. And I just begin to release. Because dealing with people, dealing with the public, uh, dealing with finance and, and all that kind of stuff when you're traveling, when you're dealing with people in business, 
it, and you just have to release. And I think sometimes saints, they're too religious to release. They're too religious to let go. But they end up with high blood pressure. To, they end up with all kinds of illnesses because they they won't let God let go and let God saints. You will feel so much better. And people may think you're crazy, but that's all right. You be you in the car by yourself. But you will come to a point in your saved sanctified life. You feel like your world is closing in on you. You feel like everything is closing in. And that's why God sent a word, a message, to preach a song or a testimony to send you some relief when you're going through your midnight hour. And 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 People don't have to tell me uh, anything more what they're going through. Because when you're going through, you wear it. You wear it just like someone wearing a suit or a dress. You wear it. They can't see through my suit, but they can see my suit. And sometimes things you're going through is like a suit. The person I'm like can't see what you're going through, but they can see the suit. The suit is your physical flesh. The spirit is the one they can see and feel. There's something going on on the inside of that dress or that suit. And you can try to cover it up, but yet still, the spirit will reveal that something is not right. Something is going on. And that's why I, I pray. I don't say anything to an individual, but I can feel, I can sense that, they, it, it, first of all, they're not acting the way they normally act. They either kind of docile, docile, out of it, not they're in church, but not in church. They're speaking, but they're not speaking. It's many signs. That, that are given uh, when a person is going through a storm. Even when they shout, it's not a shout of joy, it's a shout, it's a shout of to release. Even when they sing, it's a song. It's like to purge you of what you're dealing with. It's like a purging. When a person is purging for the Holy Spirit, that's the way it is when you bog down. When things are going on, you don't have to say a word. But you can see it in the spirit realm that this person is dealing with something. I can sit in that pulpit and I can pick out people in that building and spaces of stuff. I can tell when they're sick. I can tell when they're worried. I can tell when they have family issues. I can tell when they have job issues. Because it's like, because I'm sitting there and I can see outward. And, and it's like a ray of sunlight. You can see it. You don't say anything about it. You don't do anything about it. You let God handle the situation. And God will give you the, the insight. Your child will tell you when they're sick. You can feel it. They're going to tell you when they're hurting. You, it, when you can tell when they are having a, a relationship problem. Or school problem. Or financial problem, or whatever they're going through, you can feel it. They don't have to say a word, but because of their unusualness, it's not the same. 
it's a, it's like it's not the same as usual. It's something different. And sometimes you ask a person, what you know, what you going through? With? You can you can tell something happening. And you say, well, come on, tell me what's going on. I mean, you know, you're not acting right because you're used to that individual the way they act. You've you've been around long enough to know there's something going on. You can't put your hands on it, but it's something is just not right. It's something, it's not usual. you. This is not you. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will just let you let go and pray for them. And that's the power of relationship. That's the type of love that Jonathan had for David and David had for Jonathan. They could know when one of each other was hurting. They could know when one was going through something. No doubt, David didn't know that Jonathan would lose his life. He felt as if he would be killed before Jonathan. Because remember, his life was on the chopping block. David's life was on the chopping block. Saul wanted him dead. He didn't want him gone. He wanted him dead. That's why he weren't, he chased him for so long. He wanted him out of the way. But guess what? Things turn around. And David received the kingdom. The divided kingdom. They brought back the, all the kingdoms together. And to Solomon. This had it divided. David stood. He was not perfect. He had his misgivings. David should have been punished. He should have died by taking Uriah's wife, having Uriah put in the heat of the battle, tried everything he could to make. Uriah think that that baby was healed instead of David. The idea didn't work. The scheme did not work. You can't scheme against the Holy Spirit. You can't scheme against God. So David ended up as an old man running his life as well. And then in the latter years, his own son tried to take his wife. Everything David did came back to haunt him. Came right back to haunt him. It came back to Saul and Jonathan and also to David. Nobody get away. So and the moral of the story is, God knows you and me, but we have to keep loving and sharing. Praise God tonight that I um, was able to share with you a little about the love, the, the true love, not as a man to a man or a woman to a woman, but the love of God, the love of the Most High God. He loves us. Cares for you. Whatever you're going through tonight, remember God loves you. He's with you. He's for you. As we're to close, we're praying for Dr. Miller, his family. We're praying for those families that are in Nashville, Tennessee, lost their children. Not wrong, folks. They lost their babies sent their babies to school and the babies never made it home. I'm praying for that family right now. Hallelujah. We pray for that family. No, that they're, what they're going through right now. Only God knows. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those families that lost their love, those babies. And this a merciless killing. 
We pray for the families. Hallelujah. No peace, no joy. Kid went to school. Fix their lunch. Care them all. Put them on a bus. Draw them all. And the babies never return home. What a dreadful situation. And many across this country. Same way. To lead the blood of Christ upon our children in school, our teachers and all those in the building, janitors, teachers, whomever, kitchen staff, our babies that have been slaughtered in the hands of guns. I'm going to put it like that, of guns. In Jesus' name, we will restore some civility to this nation. Oh, God, give us peace. Let them pass laws to control some of this violence. In Jesus' name, we pray. Protect our families. Protect our children. Protect all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed, the Lord. Thank y'all for looking in. And we have a blessed night. May God's mercy be upon you. In Jesus' name. Good night.